Hi, my name is Greg and welcome to Chapter 9 Part B where I'll, I'll cover uh, some work that I've done on the suspension and steering of my 1949 P3 Rover. Uh, so this is really uh, just like a continuing series of uh, videos that I've done uh, covering the, the restoration work that I've uh, been, been doing on my 1949 Rover. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, this photo shows uh, the steering wheel of my P3 Rover before I'd removed it. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but I'll, I'll show you some other shots where you can see that uh, there was a, uh, a fair bit of cracking and, and cosmetic work that uh, needed attention. Uh, so overall, in this um, part B uh, of this uh, uh, chapter 9, I'll, uh, I'll cover the, the cosmetic work and, and the reassembly of the front suspension. So just a close-up of the steering wheel here. Uh, you can see uh, that the steering wheel has been affected, I guess, by the sun over the years. It did take me a while to work out how to actually remove the steering wheel. Uh, there's, a, as you can see, there's a horn button uh, in the middle, uh, and there's also a switch on there for the for for dipping the headlights. Uh, uh, that's attached to a, a long tube which goes through the centre of the steering column, uh, which carries the the wires for the for the horn and and the the headlights. Um, so it took me a while just to figure out how to disassemble all of that, but uh, got there in the end. Most of these shots I actually took uh, to send to a, a company in uh, Warrigal, Victoria that does uh, uh, steering wheel restorations, a, a company called uh, Yesteryear Steering Wheels. Uh, so uh, after I'd uh, disassembled the steering wheel, I, I sent the parts off to them. This just shows that centre tube that I was talking about uh, that attaches to the horn button. Uh, largely, I just took some photos like this uh, to help me with the reassembly later on. Uh, this shows what I'd refer to as the switch gear that's uh, on the steering column. Uh, so there's a switch there where you can switch on your side lights uh, and then the second seating is uh, for the headlights. Uh, and then uh, on the other side, there's uh, in the indicator switch stalk. Uh, I also sent these parts off to uh, yesteryear steering wheels for uh, beautification. Uh, this photo and the next just uh, shows a bracket uh, that holds uh, the steering column in place in inside the car. Uh, I took these uh, these parts apart and uh, sent them off for powder coating. Here's the steering wheel, uh, a return from yesteryear steering wheels, and I'm yeah very happy with the result. Looks uh, beautiful, I think. Uh, whilst I'd sent the steering wheel away, I also uh, I was also getting uh, other parts powder coated, so you can see the steering column uh, and some other little bits and pieces that I had uh, powder coated here. More powder coated parts, so some parts from the front suspension, uh, what I'd refer to as the, the inner guards. Uh, yep, all looking good now. So these are the front suspension springs that I, uh, I uh, cleaned up and repainted myself. Starting to put the front suspension back together again now. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to do it because I'd uh, kind of forgotten how it went uh, together. Uh, but again I was able to use uh, the, the Rover Sports Register uh, sort of parts manual and, and service manual and, and they were quite helpful. Uh, so I've begun by uh, you know, uh, reassembling the, the lower links uh, and uh, in the upper link, uh, the tricky part was uh, fitting the road spring, which I'll come to. Here's the, the steering box back in. It wasn't too hard to refit actually, uh, but did some did some work on that, which I sort of detailed a little bit in uh, in part A of chapter nine. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned in that chapter, I've fitted uh, new oil seals. There's also a little seal uh, that right at the uh, the back end or the bottom of the steering box uh, where that, that centre tube goes through. Uh, there's like a little rubber seal there. Uh, again, I was able to use a, a Land Rover part or a part for a Series 1 Land Rover, which is uh, the, the same part number and, and fitted perfectly. Just about uh, completely reassembled now. I'll... Uh, do a short video that sort of covers that uh, process or the reassembly process a little bit.
Well, here's um, the front end in an almost finished state. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in uh, to show you what further work needs to be done. The only remaining work to do now is to uh, just finish fitting uh, the sway bar. Um, I'm going to actually, before I do that, uh, remove it completely, repaint it. Um, and that bar, uh, it's going to be a little hard to show you here, uh, but there's this special bolt that goes from there to the sway bar. Um, and that's got rubber bushings on it. Uh, as you can see here, um, so I'll be fitting that, but once that's done, uh, the job is done really. And uh, what a lot of work it's been. Uh, so I'll just focus in on some of the parts now. Um, so you can see that every, every part's been really re removed, repainted. Uh, the top link here, I've got a uh, re replacement uh, rebound rubber. I've put uh, new bushings, uh, rubber bushings in everywhere, uh, either in there. Uh, I'll just move down a bit lower now. I've removed the road springs, uh, cleaned them up, repainted them. I had to make, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this all that well, but I'll focus in on it. Uh, right at the top of the spring there's a little packing washer. Uh, two little packing washers and the same at the bottom which you won't be able to see. Uh, I had to remake all of those. Uh, I guess the ones that were there were quite rusty. Uh, I've also, there's a rebound wrapper at the bottom here uh, which I managed to obtain from uh, Meteor Spares in England. Uh, that's all looking in very good shape now. Uh, here you see the the bottom link uh, which has been removed, cleaned up, powder coated and put back in. Uh, probably the most tricky part of the job was refitting these road springs. Uh, there's a plate at the bottom of this bottom link uh, and I followed the instructions <laughs> yeah I followed the instructions as laid out in the uh, the Rover workshop manual that's uh, produced by the the Rover Sports Register in England. Uh, that was quite helpful. Uh, so what I did is uh, cut a block of wood. Now the radius is on either end of this correspond uh, with the shape of that bottom bracket. Uh, so the trick was to use a trolley jack you had to have the car up on stands uh, because you, ne you needed a bit of um, ground clearance uh, but then using that block of wood uh, uh, under that bottom plate I was able to jack that up using this trolley jack uh, and get the spring back into place. The trick was, or the difficult, most difficult part of it was, you had to jack it up, uh, this plate up, uh, so that all these there's three bolts to the front here and three at the back uh, and you had to have all those holes line up so you could get the bolts back in. Uh, that took a, a bit of trial and error but we got there and then. Just moving to the other side now, uh, you can see I've fitted uh, new shock absorbers, uh, new bushes. Uh, you can see the, the radius arm here, I uh, removed both of those, uh, cleaned them up, repainted them. I uh, also had a fair bit of work to do, there's a housing at the other end of it which I'll just get down and show you. So here's the radius arm and it goes into a, a housing which you can't see all that well from here, there's a, bra a bracket here as well. Uh, I had to do a bit of repair on the, uh, on the housing that was slightly damaged on, on both sides. Uh, and as you can see, I put all new uh, high tensile uh, zinc plated fasteners in everywhere I've gone really. Uh, just on the other side now, uh, as a, after I replaced all the, the, the fasteners, I also made up some new, uh, these are like a, it's a washer with a tab that sort of folds over uh, the, the hexagon part of the bolt uh, to stop it from uh, un unwinding. 
that's a, a fairly common feature on a, on a lot of the suspension parts on the Rover uh, just so nothing falls apart okay back down underneath the car again now so that's the from the front of the car here uh, you can see the the lower link there uh, I'm just going to point or focus in uh, the, the sump for the engine which I'll just point out it's there uh, whilst I had all the steering linkages out I, I removed the sump I uh, did some work on that which I'll describe uh, shortly uh, and then the last thing to focus in on I think is uh, the relay lever mechanism which is there uh, which I did a lot of work on also did a lot of work on this bracket that uh, sort of protects it uh, and also acts as a jacking point and almost lastly now I think uh, here's a, the steering wheel back in I'll put it the opposite way up to what it was uh, um, I actually prefer it this way I'm not sure whether that's correct though uh, as in I've got these two arms sort of facing downwards uh, whereas originally it was the other way around uh, but you can see the steering wheels come up rather nicely I've had the, the, the switch gear all refinished uh, and the steering column has been powder coated I'm just going to look, um, so here's the rest of the steering column I've got a, uh, a new uh, rubber grommet there which I just need to f finish fitting uh, steering column, steering box down here which I, I did quite a lot of work on which I'll, I'll detail uh, as well and uh, here we have uh, I guess what I'd refer to as the inner guard uh, I removed that, had that powder coated uh, I've uh, fitted uh, new reproduction junction boxes uh, for the electrics, so uh, there it is I'm just uh, looking at the Rover Sports Register P3 parts list now I also use this manual quite a lot uh, you can see there's a, a, a diagram here which uh, uh, shows the steering wheel, um, the steering column, uh, steering box uh, all the associated parts um, I should have probably taken more video as I was going along but uh, one of the bits of work I also did uh, was uh, this is a tube here which goes through the centre uh, of the steering column uh, that carries uh, the wiring for the, uh, the horn and the headlights um, I did quite a bit of work on fixing that up, it's got a, uh, some little bushings that support it and I made up new ones uh, also made up some, some new bushings um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it here oh, there's, yeah, it shows it there, now that uh, supports the steering column as well so I made, it made up a, a new bushing for that as well Okay, here I am back in my shed. Uh, you, can, you can see the two front guards here, which I've, uh, well, whilst I've had those off the car to, to work on the front suspension and steering, I've uh, uh, stripped them down to bare metal. Uh, and they're looking, uh, I reckon, quite lovely, really. Now, as I mentioned in the last little video section, I, I removed the sump. Uh, now, the reason I did that was just to, uh, to clean out the inside of it. Because uh, I figured it might have a bit of an accumulation of sludge in there. Uh, what I didn't count on though was uh, uh, the the sump plug being damaged. Uh, so when I when I actually went to put the the sump back on again, uh, I just couldn't get the sump plug to um, uh, to tighten up properly. Uh, so I ended up uh, uh, inserting a, a helicoil, which is like a, a sort of thread repair system, uh, into the sump plug hole, and uh, all was good after that. Uh, just a shot of the inside of the sump here. It didn't have a whole lot of uh, sludge in there, but uh, anyway, what was there I cleaned out. Uh, another problem I had after I fitted it too was uh, there's a uh, like a sender unit that bolts onto the side of the sump, uh, which uh, gives you your oil level. Because uh, there's like a, a gauge inside the car uh, that, 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 that uh, you can press a button and get your oil level. Uh, but I, I had a hell of a time getting that to, to seal um, uh, I think uh, it took me about three or even four tries uh, with lots of gasket goo to actually get it to seal so it didn't leak oil but uh, I just got a couple of final shots of the front end of the car uh, this time with the radiator removed uh, the reason I removed the radiator was uh, I had to do that in order to get the sway bar out uh, because I wanted to repaint the sway bar and replace all the bushings uh, rubber bushings on it uh, 
Again, had a lot of fun uh, after I refitted the radiator. For some reason, the the bottom fitting on the radiator decided that uh, it wanted to leak, uh, so I had to get that uh, resoldered. Uh, but yeah, it seems to be a common theme uh, on on this car. N- nothing is easy. <laughs> Uh, after this shot, I got a little bit of uh, video footage that I shot because uh, I had to fix uh, yet another problem uh, after I got all the uh, steering uh, linkages and everything back in, the steering box back in, uh, and I put oil in the steering box. Uh, the steering box leaked oil uh, from the bottom, uh, so I, I then had to sort of figure out why it was leaking oil and, uh, and come up with a solution. All right, under the car. And I've uh, got a problem to fix because I've had some oil leaking from the steering box. So I've removed uh, this mounting bracket uh, that attaches to the, the steering box assembly. Uh, so I'll just move a bit further under the car now. Okay, I'm just focusing in on the bottom of the steering box now. And you can see this is the bottom end of the rocker shaft that I'm pointing to here now. Uh, now up at this point in here there's an oil seal uh, right at the bottom of that assembly I think what I must have done when I was assembling this uh, this spline section of the shaft uh, as I was fitting it that must have damaged the the lip of the oil seal Uh, so I've had an oil leak because of that Uh, so anyway I've I've removed uh, the mounting bracket and I've removed, uh, or temporarily just swung the the drop arm that you can see here uh, that that attaches to this shaft, Uh, removed that. Uh, I should be able to get the seal out uh, without removing the steering box from the car. I might have to take the top plate off the steering box uh, and and lift the rocker shaft up uh, so that I can get the seal out. Um, anyway, that's the plan, uh, and then it'll finally be finished. Well, uh, hi again. Uh, with this, I'll, I'll conclude um, uh, part B of chapter 9 on, on the suspension and steering on my P3 Rover. I uh, hope you found it enjoyable and maybe a bit informative as well. Um, not 100% sure what I'll do uh, for chapter 10. Um, most recently, I've been working on um, some paint stripping. Uh, as you can see I've got the front guards removed from the car at the moment. Um, whilst I've had those off I've, I've been uh, stripping those down to bare metal. Uh, so perhaps I'll do a chapter on stripping. Uh, but anyway, uh, stay tuned and see you next time.